So I'm going to try to keep this short. This is going to be more of a walkthrough than a tutorial, but let me know if you have any questions in the comments and we can go through it. Uh, so I have this puppet from the content browser. I place it into Mixamo. You can see how to go through the process in my previous motion tutorial. I'm going to drag, in, drag and drop the FBX file I got from Mixamo while holding shift into my scene. And this is going to merge it. This is a new little improvement. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of my original model. Let's just delete everything here except the group. And I'm gonna take everything I got from Mixamo and place it in, in the group. So basically I retain my material. I want to do some cleanup because we see all of these uh, different objects that uh, the model consists of has its own skin. So let's go to our filters, select one of the skins and double click the skin here and click delete to delete all of the skin objects and instead select the group go to character hold shift and make a new skin object all right that's great now it only plays once go to the timeline select it set it to repeat and another new thing if you set repetitions to zero it's going to repeat forever so a couple of small improvements there Let's get one more improvement, actually. Let's say that you want to merge all of these models into one model. You can just connect and delete, and it's going to retain the weighting information into the new mesh. So as simply as that, you can, you can just uh, collapse your, your uh, weighted models into a single model. All right, so animation is looking great, but uh, the disadvantage is that this is baked. I have very little control over it. And uh, not only that, it doesn't even have any controllers to intuitively um, control it, basically. And this is where the mix memory comes in. You make it with the character template. So we're making the character template, but I want to use my T pose of the character. I can reset to the bind pose here. And just to make sure it's going to stay to the bind pose, I'm going to turn off the animation from the timeline. So on the character, go to the object and set the mix and control rig here. I'm going to make the root, make the pelvis, legs, arms, and hands. And then if I hit adjust, it automatically adjusts to the, to the uh, mix and rigs. I'm going to skip the binding because I want to transfer the weights. Go to our, um, go to our root here. And on the controllers, I can click retarget all and it will retarget the controllers into the Mixamo rig. And I'm going to take my model, put it on the weight transfer and transfer the weights. So now I transfer the weights from the Mixamo rig into my control rig. And if I enable the animation, we see that the control rig is now following the joints. So let's clean up our viewport a bit, hide the joint hierarchy and uh, select our character. In the display tab, just show the controllers. And actually, I would like to see all of the controllers in the object manager as well. And I don't want to see the character attributes. Also, this mouse over, I don't like it. Turn it off. Uh, great. OK, so I have my animation in my control rig. I can, but it's not exactly on the control rig. It's uh, following the animation, but as you can see, it doesn't have any keyframes. I can very easily make some adjustments and then they are added on top of the animation. So I can make variations of the animation very, very easily. So if I right click and drag, I can raycast select some of the controllers. And uh, if I go to my rotate tool, you see everything rotates at once. I'm gonna enable pair object manipulation and gimbaling rotation. Now I can adjust each controller separately, so I can very easily make some variations of my animation, like this. Uh, and at any time, I just select all of these controllers. You see, now uh, it also selects the model, so let's fix that. Uh, middle click the model hierarchy, add it to a new layer, and name it model, and lock it. So I'm not going to select it anymore by mistake. Select all your controllers, reset PSR, everything goes back to the original animation. All right, let's offset this animation. 
here's a trick. Let's uh, select one of the controllers that is going to move. So this animation basically is designed to be offset easily. Uh, it's moving at a constant speed. So you can see that the foot is having the same pose, it's just moving back, right? And we know it has a constant speed, so we just need to know how far back did it move. So here it has 24.38, right? And uh, here it has, at the beginning, it has 0 0.67, let's see. So basically the difference in four frames is about 23.7. So I'm going to take the master control over here. I'm going to uh, add a keyframe on the Z axis, go for four frames and move it 23.7. So just about, well, around here, I guess, um, and add another keyframe. So now it's gonna it's gonna jitter because it has some interpolation. If you select the controller here, go to the F curves, hit H, you can see the interpolation. Let's turn this off and um, scrap the animation, and we can see the food is fairly planted on the floor. And I want to repeat this animation. You see, it flattens out here, so it doesn't repeat. So we want to repeat it. So click to select the tracks and just offset repeat. So now it will it will just move forward. As simply as that. All right, and now I have controllers that I can either pose or easily add some, some animation to adjust the character to my, to my scene, to personalize the animation, basically. I'm gonna add an obstacle. So let's add an obstacle that the character will find on the way. And uh, let's see how we can we can overcome this this uh, little obstacle. All right, like right over here. So I'm gonna add a few keyframes. We want this character to step on this box and then continue, right? And this is the kind of stuff that are really difficult to do when you just have baked animation, and this is where you build the control rig and then you can have control over it. So around here, I think it's still it's still uh, normal. So just before, yeah, around here, let's turn off the scaling and add the keyframe. So it's going to step on the box and then he's going to continue. And I guess around here, it's going to go back to normal. Add another keyframe. I just need to fix this middle part. So when he would normally land the, the foot, I want it to land on the box, right? So let's take this and put it on the box. I'm hitting, uh, yeah, you can see the shortcuts here for all the display modes. NG is to see the lines and NA go back to garage shading. So let's add a keyframe here. So we can see he's stepping on the box and then slowly goes back to normal, right? So around here, I suppose I'm gonna drag this keyframe and then hold control while I'm dragging it and make a copy of this keyframe. So basically, he's going to keep his foot planted on the box and then continue. Maybe if you want, you can make like a small correction. So I guess around, let's go back here, add the keyframe here, and this keyframe that goes inside, uh, we're going to fix it like this. So let's see what it did. All right. So I guess with just this uh, four, five keyframes, basically, we made the foot step on the box. But of course, he doesn't seem to have a lot of weight. He's just moving normally. Let's put some uh, keyframes on the hips as well. So, so let's see. I guess around here, it's still normal. And um, around here, it will become normal again. All right, so I need to fix what's happening in between. Um, so at first, I think he will crouch a little bit more like this. And then he will rise, he will push on the box and, and get up like that. And then when he goes back here, he will go lower and then back to normal. So let's see how it looks. 
um, instead of play I was hitting keyframe let's see how it looks so just like that you can you can make maybe this is a bit too much so let's see You can try things out, but because there is already the baked animation on the back, it already looks quite believable with um, with just a few keyframes like this. So let's move it back here. So without worrying about interpolation and, and things, I can make quick quick adjustments to make the character fit to the to the conditions of the scene yeah and basically this is the introduction to the mixum control rig i hope you like it and i'm going to see you to the next tutorial